Hey, what's going on guys? Robert Thompson Nishan back with another video. And today I'm gonna to be sharing with you guys five strategies that I've used that actually helped me in my studying. So these are study strategies that I wish I had when I first started school, but eventually when I started implementing them into my routine, I noticed a great improvement overall in my study habits. I noticed a great improvement in the quality of my studying as well as the amount of time that I studied. So let's get right into the video. So the first study strategy that has actually helped me out a lot in terms of my quality of studying, it's gonna be the Pomodoro session. And the reason why this, set, this is such an important method is because when I first started studying, I would just go straight into the document and just hopefully I can like study as much as possible and then complete the document. But then now, instead of doing that, I focused on actually splitting up the task into very, very specific task. So I would say I would just read one chapter or read this part of the chapter. And then I would spend about 20 to 25 minutes on that. And then after that 25 or 20 minutes, I would just take a break. And the important part of that is that over time, you understand that like your mind really can't like hold on to information for that long period of time. And eventually I noticed that like after the 30 minutes, I would just like use my phone. So I would say I was studying for eight hours, but out of the eight hours, I'm only studying for like two hours. So after implementing this, I'm actually spending time on that exact task. And the important part about this um, method is that you actually have breaks in between and eventually you have breaks that you actually enjoy. So I usually like to call my friends or I call my family or I have like a little snack in between that I usually enjoy. And then the good thing about this also is that over time you actually progress and then you can actually do like 30 minute, 40 minute or 50 minute sessions and then you can take 10 minute breaks. So eventually your focus and your ability to like maintain composure while studying can actually build up over time. The next strategy that I think was very, very impactful for me was called the Pareto Principle or the 80-20 rule. And I'm not gonna lie to you guys, like when I first learned this principle, I was like kind of skeptical about it. I was like, how is it possible that 20% of the things I do can result for 80% of the results? So the reason why I first started thinking about this was because my teacher said one day, memorize the short list. The reason why is because when you look at this chart right here, I'll show you all the statin therapy drugs for high cholesterol. And most people, when they take a new statin therapy drug, you either get a high intensity or a moderate intensity. So all you have to do is memorize the drugs that are high intensity, which are two drugs, and then the rest of them, you don't have to memorize. If they're not high intensity, they're moderate intensity, and that's it. So I learned that method. It basically changed the way I studied. And from then on, I think of it like this, like, Try to get the most bang for your buck. So try to figure out the best method for you to learn the most information as fast as possible and then most effectively. And then when you start doing it like that, you actually start to see like small connections and able to actually learn things a lot faster overall. So the next principle is gonna be improving my critical thinking. And this is something that I first I really really struggled with, especially when I started getting into the later years of pharmacy school, because overall I don't understand how critical thinking works. And the thing about critical thinking is that you have to use the ability to memorize facts as well as understanding concepts. And for someone like me, I'm very, very good at um, understanding concepts because I'm like, I like math, you know, like I don't have to memorize anything, I just have to memorize the process of how things work. But the problem was that you have to use a lot of uh, memorizing the facts, like anatomy, where you have to memorize a lot of different things at once. And that's what I struggled with a lot, which is why we're gonna go to the next point, which is gonna be active learning. But basically the whole premise of that was that I had to make a method for myself to really focus on memorizing a lot of different facts so that way I could actually use that and understand the concepts in order to bridge the gap between my critical thinking skills overall. So the next premise is going to be active learning and the reason why I struggled with this so much was because when I was in school or like my freshman year I used to literally read the textbook three times like I swear like I read the textbook three times and that was probably the worst thing I could have done. And I had this rule where like I read the textbook one time before class, one time after class, and then one time before a test. It wasted so much time. And then now I learn like, okay, instead of doing that, I can actually focus on making questions for myself or focus on ways of like saying, read the page first and then say what to learn from this page. And the important thing is try to make your information or the things that you're learning as active as possible is the most important part because I would go read through an entire textbook and then I go on a test and I'm just sitting there like, what is this? Like, I feel like I have no idea what's going on because I never actually had the skill of like actually recalling information and like putting it on a paper. I think it's almost like practicing for a game. Like when you're playing a sports game, the whole point is that you wanna have your practice to be harder than the game. So when you actually go into the game, you've already experienced it. 
And that's something that I never really focused on because when I get to the actual like exam, my study method was not really that hard or wasn't really hard to do. That didn't force me to actually learn and like recall information. And that's the hardest part of studying, I feel like, because when you go through the hardest part of like your practice or the studying method, then when the game comes or the exam comes, you're able to just study a lot more effectively. Okay, so now we got the last method, which is probably the most impactful method that I've learned to study with. And it's called the SQ3R method. And I made it my own method, but basically I make it like this. The survey, question, read, recall, and then reflect. And the reason why this method is so impactful for me was because at first I used to just, like I said before, read the textbook. And then I would just go through the chapters, keep going through chapters in each time. But then when I actually got into the later years, I understood that I have to focus on things that I don't understand. So this premise of this method is that you survey the textbook or the PowerPoint you're going through, and then you write down the important concepts. So like instead of writing down just a full class, you write down each individual chapter or like each subsections first. After making that, you make questions for them or the questions that you think the teacher's gonna ask you. So in there, you can literally write questions of like, okay, what does this word mean? What does this word mean? What does this word mean? What does this mean? How does this happen? Or why this happens? And then after that, when the teacher goes over the lecture, you then you ask the same questions again that they ask you in class. Then after doing that, you read through it. So after you have a good idea of the questions that they're asking you and what you're, what you're trying to look for, you actually read through the entire textbook or the lecture slides and then you can actually write down the answers to the questions that you read for yourself. Then, after doing that, you basically just do recall. So then you just ask yourself the questions over and over again and see if you actually know the information. And then after you do that, if you get any questions wrong, you have to re reflect on that and say, why did I get this wrong? Or do I have to read more upon this or understand why? And then you go back into the textbook or you go into outside sources and you actually look up why this is the case of why this is happening. And then you constantly get into this method. And then once you get to that method, it makes it so much easier because I don't have to study as much as possible. I just have to study on what I don't know. And also I'm really looking for things that are very, very important to know. Instead of just looking up general information that no one's gonna need, I look at information that the patient actually might need to, for counseling. Or I look at information that would actually help me to understand why um, this drug is not working. And that's pretty much it. I think that's probably the most important method out of all of them is the SQ3R method. So that's gonna be the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll catch you guys next time. Peace out, bye.